All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PSL Season 2, Up and Downs for Code A, Code B. Bottom, drop down to Code B. The rest of the players, they're up into Code A. We're going to have a nice big Code A for you guys this year. Working on our streaming right now, but once we get to groups, it'll all be fantastic, lovely. So, we most recently saw a ZVZ between Trombone Ham and Rushers. Trombone Ham took it nicely, very clean. Um, there wasn't a ton of scary moments for him in that game. However, Trombone Ham is a random player. He has now spawned as Protoss. So we are going to have a TVZ on Ohana. It was actually Rusher's pick. Kind of worked against him a little bit. Um, I feel like this is not a, a very Zerg-favored map versus Protoss, but Zerg is always favored because in Festers. So, so we're about to start up this replay, and here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the top left-hand corner, it is our teal Protoss slash random player, Payback Trombone Ham. And in the bottom right-hand corner, still wearing red. We love it when players wear the same color throughout their series. It is our red Zerg player, Payback Rushers. So finally, you must be breathing a sigh of relief right now, Lawn Gnome. Please, yeah, I'm tell us happy. about... Tell us about the great matchup that is PvZ. All right, PvZ is probably my favorite matchup. I usually win most of my games against Zerg. My and this is because of my favorite build, the Immortal Sentry All In, which I know every Zerg that just haunts their nightmares when they go to sleep. They just they just hate the build. And basically, what you do is you're gonna you'll do like standard forward fast stand. That's basically every single matchup for the PvZ, and then you just go all Sentry, three Immortals throw on some Stalkers and Zealots. And usually it hits right around the time they have like their third kind of done, and it just basically will decimate any sort of Zerg player. Unless they go Air, or at kind of an Infestor kind of build, and they can stop pretty easily. So I'm kind of looking to see if Trombo will maybe do that. I know he has done an Immortal Sentry a few times maybe. I'm not exactly sure about what his Protoss build is. So, I mean, we'll see in this game. Yeah, now this map, is this a, you know, what's your opinion of the Immortal Sentry on this map? Um, It works pretty well. The main reasons why is for the natural, you have those two ramps. And what's good for the Protoss is you can force field those really easily. So if the Zerg tries to retreat back a bit, you can sometimes catch half their army in, the, in their natural and then the other half at the third. Or you can also kind of uh, force field off from reinforcements coming in. Yeah, now we're going to get a little bit of fancy here out from Trombone Ham. He is going to go Nexus first. Basically saying, you know, I guess screw you to Rushers, but Rushers has also already got his pull halfway done. He's about to get his hatch down. And pulling two drones down to do it, he knows that there's going to try and be a, a pylon block, and Trombone Ham actually doing a really nice job of blocking it. Um, yeah, he's actually stopped this for quite a few seconds now. There's the pylon going down. What's your, you know, what are your thoughts on the pylon block? I know my thoughts on the eBay block, but um, pylon block, I like using it sometimes. Um, with the Nexus first, it works pretty well. The I'm guessing he might let this cancel. I'm not entirely sure. I'm he I'm guessing he will though. Yep, and he does. And I'm actually kind of interested about him putting his pylon down. His pylon is natural before his gateway. When I do the Immortal Sentry and, and or just like a Nexus first forward fast expand. I usually like to go at like 17 supply, I'll go a forge, gateway, and then I'll put down my pylon all at 17. And those usually will all finish before I get up to 18 supply, and you can put your can down as well. Yeah, now I have to say, uh, Rushers did the really smart thing here, where he just went and took his third instead of his natural mm -hmm. uh, for his expansion. And then now he's able to safely expand, get up to three bases where he wants to be. You know, in StarCraft, Terran are strongest on one base, Protoss are strongest on two base, and Zerg are strongest on three base. So now we see where both these players are at their strongest. Um, you know, Zerg getting up to his, his three base that he loves, breaking down these, brack, these back rocks. Hopefully he'll spread some creep if he's a good Zerg player. And, yeah, he'll be sitting pretty until whatever timing attack uh, Trombone decides to use on him. Uh, both of them staying well. They're not getting terribly supply blocked. Rush is a little supply blocked right now. Uh, as 
Well, yeah, there is, I say that Rush gets supply block. Thank you, Rushers, for proving me right. Not. <laughs> um, he actually has a really big supply, I mean, uh, minerals built up. I'd like to see him just get a lot more drones now. He's actually behind in drones. Like, he has less drones than Shramona's probe, so that's actually kind of a bad sign. He needs to be spending those minerals, getting try to get queens at all his bases, and building up and get the higher supply. Yeah, I have to agree with you here. Now, it's going to be very interesting to see. Now, the Cyber Core is down, so we're going to be able to see what our Protoss player, Trombone Ham, decides to go for. There's the robotics facility. Yeah. Uh, this I looks mean, like it's going to be a mortal sentry all in. This is pretty similar to the build I do usually when I do it. His robo is down around usually like the 40, 39 food count. And he's also getting both his gases at his natural, which is pretty standard with that. So probably what Trombone's going to do after this is probably in the next, like, 30 seconds, he's going to put down three more gateways, get up to four gates, kind of start maybe pumping out a few sentries from his one uh, gateway that he has built already. And then from there, just continuously, he's going to make two or three immortals, get his other three gates, he's up to seven total gates. After that, make his gateway units, and then just push out around, like, the 12-minute mark, maybe. Yeah, now one thing I do have to say in Trombone Ham's favor, he's actually very good at the immortal sentry. If, you, uh, if you're ever on the site... You will see Trombone Ham post. He's a, he's a fairly standard poster. And his avatar, his profile picture, is a gif of him using force fields in an immortal sentry all in. And it's spectacular. Yeah, but like, I've actually I have seen that. It is really impressive. Actually, one thing I want to point out, Trombone's actually missing a probe on one of his assimilators, his top left one in his natural. So hopefully he'll realize that and fix that. But I mean it's not too big of a deal right now. And, yep, it looks like he is doing most sentry all in. He's getting a second mortal out now. He has four gateways. Around when warp gate finishes, I'm guessing he'll put on his other three gateways. And then start making some more sentries, more zealots, more stalkers. And then, if he will do this, I don't know if he does it or not, but what I like to do is after I finish my third immortal, I like to do a warp prism just to use for microing the mortals in case they get surrounded. Yeah, yeah and that's something we see particularly parting who... You know, this is, he basically made this build what it is. Uh, that's what he is very well known for. We do see a lot of roaches coming out now. And, you know, Trombone Ham looking down here, and he's probably kind of smiling right now, seeing this, uh, this undefended third, except for the queen, which, I mean, for mortals is nothing. Yeah, if I, uh, if so I were Trombone, I'd be really happy right now. That's usually what I like to look for. If the third does not uh, like have any sort of spine crawlers, it's, you can take it out very easily, force field off ramps, and you're in really good shape. Yeah, I do have to say, there's a significant bank, actually, for Trombone Ham, though, uh, particularly in the minerals department. Uh, he is going up to a significant gateway count. He's up to 6-7 now, all gateways, and... Looks like he's getting ready to go, you know, choo-choo time it is. Yep, he's pushing out exactly. Usually it hits around like 10.30 mark. That's pretty standard. He's going to have his, he's making his warp prism right now. It's going to catch up to the army probably around when he gets to the third. And that'll be used to pick up mortals, move them back. And also, too, in case his proxy pilot, I know he has one up in the top, like behind the main line of that fourth base over there. And in case that got picked off, you can also use his warp prism to warp in more units. Oh, now one thing I do want to point out, this was not scouted by rushers. He he almost knew exactly where the range of the um, of the Zelnaga was, and he stayed out of it. Let's see if he knows about... Oh, the warp prism does come into view, but rushers, but Trombone Ham pulls it out right as fast as he can, and let's see if he decides to. There's a lot of roaches here. Yeah, and, he's coming in now, yeah. and this is going to be pretty hard for a rusher to defend if he puts his force fields right. Yeah, and they're, they're fairly good force fields. They're not great force fields, but they're not terrible at the same time. Going to be a warp in of stalkers, and he's going to go take this third out. This queen going to die almost instantly. He gets the yeah. final inject off, but this, this hatchery will die before anything pops out of it. So almost a moot point. 44 lings on the way. Not a lot of zealots, actually, for our Protoss player. I would like to see maybe more of those. That would definitely help this. Yep. Seeing as it takes so many links to kill a zealot, he does make a warp in of zealots, and now it's kind of decision time. Which ramp does he decide to go up? And you know, there's no he can speed basically on his go in well. either one. He would be fine with the amount of force fields head. He could actually just kind of come in here, force field away the units, kind of use those spine cars actually to help him out, like wall off. And he's actually going to force field his ramp right here, which is really smart. Just cut the army in half. 
right and there's the gg from rushers and game over well done by john boneham seeing a fantastic immortal century from him he takes the 2-0 over rushers and ladies and gentlemen we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back with psl season two up and downs oh so uh just been told that 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 was actually the last set for the night i was given another set later for after this nuffsy's coach but we can do we'll do that wednesday night it's getting very oh it's already been cast fantastic yeah actually ages we actually casted that last week and so that one's done we actually that was, was all our games for this week and we'll probably have some more then for wednesday hopefully. yeah so please keep playing